Greetings and a very good morning to you from Nurse Hill Town. It is day three of the 2019 World Power at Power Lifting Championships. And here's the primer, but you know it already. Very good morning to you then. It is day three. We've got three events to look forward to. The men's 54 kg is coming up now, followed by the men's 59 kg. That is it. So a huge amount to look forward to today. This 54 kg event, very, very competitive. So the men's 54 kg events, the first of three today, 59 kg and the women's 50 kg throughout the afternoon. We've got the rating European World Paralympic, African, Asian champions all going in this. Among a field of 17. So first to go then for Thailand, it's Surasat Chantak, and he's aiming for 85 here. First major championship for the two Thai lifters here.
Chantak is accompanied by Tana Crit, Pan and Torn. They both competed in the Ego World Cup this year, and Sorosa Chantak finished in fourth spot there, edged just out of the medals by his teammate. Let's see how he can start off here. So 85 for Chantak, his first major championship lift of his career, and it's gonna be a good one. All three for Chantak, siding in his favor. So that's good news, that is the perfect start. Got that absolutely spot on. Lots to be happy with. That's the competition started for him. The thing is, in this opening round, we go all the way up to 150 kg. And here is the man who denied him a medal on the stage in Northern Hungary, Tanakrit. McIntorn is Thailand international teammate and likewise major international championship debut for him the bronze medalist in Egger back in April Realistically, it's about getting on the board for him and his colleague. And from there, let's see. There's only three lifters going in under 100. The next five in Group B are above the ton. And obviously, Group A is getting higher. So, Tanakrit McIntyre, 87 to be our early leader. Started well for him and then didn't. And it was all about the chess sequence. They've all voted him down on that. All three going against. It's no lift then for Tanakrit McIntorn. Even on stage these days, the lifters will know instantly. There's the new additional color system. Obviously, they felt there wasn't enough contact with the chest, so that's the end of that. So now for Canada. Here comes Dylan Sparks. Finished fourth in the Americas Open Championship in Bogota in December. He won junior gold there as well. Was seventh in the Pan Ams in Toronto in 2015. And finished ninth in the Americas Championships that same year. Based in Edmonton. 90 to start with for him. has been delivered 19 for Dylan Sparks to hit the front for Canada all three have gone against and it was the press 
on the way up that he got voted down by all three referees. So that's something to be ironed out on the way. His coaches are Jessica Ferguson and Tracy Rice, who's on stage with him, who's his mother also. He's been involved in international sport too in her career. Just waggle backwards a little bit on the way, so that's something to be ironed out behind the scenes over the next 20 minutes or so before his next lift. Fourth on stage for Japan, Mitsunori Ichikawa. Going for 117 here. We saw Maker's major championship debut at home in Japan in Kitakyushu in the Asia Oceania Championship finished sixth in that. He hit 103 in finishing sixth, going a lot higher here, 117. And since then, he's won silver in the Ego World Cup in Hungary, coached by Takeyoshi Okamoto. then for Ishikawa two from Japan here So two of the first three lifts we've seen have been voted down. Shikawa can take a big lead here if he can execute this. 117. That seemed very sufficient and it's a good lift. It's two on in Ishikawa's favour. Our centre referee had a, an issue with the chess sequence, but overall he's fine. So he's our new leader for Japan. Ishikawa, two out of three. And our referees for this, centre referee from Brazil, Luis Lete, and the side referees, Eliana Araka of Greece and Wai Manliang of China. Italy now, Paulo Augusti, we've seen him on the scene, actually part of a growing Italian scene. They have a considerable team here. Big changes from a few years ago. Good program now and a solid number of decent international lifters. Donata Teleschi we've seen claim world junior gold again and into the senior circuit. He goes now permanently. But as for Augusti, finished fifth in the European Championships in Bergsamer last year. 22nd in the World Championships last time out in Mexico City. And in terms of this year's World Cup in Dubai and Fasi finished sixth. First time we saw him on the international stage was an eighth place finish in Eger in the World Cup there two years ago. Has been uh, an international sailor in a past life. 127 for Augusti. Solid and powerful and all good. Three out of three for Augusti. And he's our new leader.
For the lifters here in Group B, who we've seen so far, it's definitely a different dynamic from the Continental Championships where they've got big medal chances here, but on the World Championship stage, it's, it's Group B. That was a really solid lift by Augusti. Here's a man who's never been on the major stage before. Major championship debut for Kabibulo Kavisov of Tajikistan. And he's starting off with 130. The lightest lift is 157. The only man who's starting in this group, the only way close to that is going to be Konstantin Panisiuk, who's in two lifts time. So Kavis off at 130. Well, that's straight quite a bit. And uh, all three have gone against him on that press on the way up. It, it started gradually wading in a backwards direction. It clipped the rack as well. No lift, but they all gave that a thumbs down. Hundred and thirty, maybe in this occasion just went in a bit too heavy, but we'll determine that a bit more in the second and third rounds. So the second of the Japanese lifters is Tetsuo Nishizaki. Been around a good few years longer than his teammate Ichikawa in this competition. It's his second world championships, finished 11th in Mexico City. Qualified for the Paralympics actually in Rio, where, as you'll know, the fields are a lot smaller than we have at the world championships. Didn't register a mark there. It's his third world, 15th in Dubai in 2014. Just missed out on a medal at the Asian Games where he was fourth in Jakarta last year, was sixth in the Asia Oceania Championships in Kitakyushu, based in Osaka, office worker, and has been a paramarathoner in his time, and in his able-bodied days, was a wrestler. Big deal that, Japan, obviously, 132. And the Shizaki to take the lead, only three misses so far in this opening round of the eight. Well, there's experience. All three happy with what he's produced. Good lift for Tetsuo Nishizaki. And he's our new leader. Good assurance. On and off and away he goes. It's 42 now. It came so, so close to his first major international medal a year ago. Regular on the podium uh, domestically in Japan. He's been national champion for a few years in a row now. Missed out on a medal by 13 kilos behind Ali Al-Daraji of Iraq, who won that bronze in Jakarta. There's a bit of a margin in the end, and what he's lifted here Nishizaki is beyond already what he did in Jakarta. 
So now the heaviest lift in Group B in this opening round for Ukraine. Kostyantin Panishuk. Eighth in his only previous World Championships in Mexico City two years ago and narrowly missed out on a medal in the Europeans last year in Berk Sumer bronze. He claims in Egger the World Cup in Hungary back in 2017. Hundred and fifty is a good solid mark. Goes beyond what he lifted in the European Championships last year and the Worlds, and he's just bounded onto stage. He's got it raised, and he's got a good lift. There you go, our leader straight away. No problem at all. Hundred and fifty for Panisjuk. Tremendous stuff, and he only missed out on a medal in back by three kilos and he lifted 146 there, 150 here. His original mark that he was looking to do was 155, but went in at 150 instead. Wasted absolutely no time. On stage, lift up, off stage. Thank you very much, what's next? Into round two we go. So that's the overall standing so far. Five good, three not so much. And we're gonna see those three again very soon because two of the three have gone in under 100. And one of them is Tanakritz McIntorn of Thailand. Missed 87 in the opening round and going for it again here. a better lift than last time and it is a good lift for McIntorn of Thailand and he gets on the board everybody was happy with that and he will be too second go at 87 he goes in a fifth place in the competition he actually thanks to that goes above his teammate Sursat Chantak who had that successful lift in the first round and who we're going to see in a couple of minutes time but McIntorn clear at 87 all smiles now in comparison to earlier it's belting lift and the issues from previously gone so now that's what Dylan Sparks is hoping to do here for Canada the second attempt at 90 Missed it last time around. Well supported. Now there's another nation with uh, more and more representation on the world stage. up two medals in the junior competition in Bogotá's two events in one open silver America's gold in the junior second stab at 90 it kind of fought a little bit the way up and that's what he's been voted down on and again it's all three again so Dylan Sparks Two attempts and no joy so far. One more go to get on the board. Mm. 
not been a stay so far. And on we go. Sorosat Chantak of Thailand, 85 in the opening round, going for 90 here. This would put him into fifth position above his international teammate, Tanakrit McIntorn. Belting lift from him in the first round. Well, Chantak is the one who missed out on the medal in the World Cup event in Egger. Pips by McIntorn, but the chance to get back ahead of his teammate here. Bit more strain this time, and it's not going to go their way. The Southeast Asian Games, the ASEAN Para Games, are coming up in January. The uh, the able-bodied element is uh, a month before. It's in December of this year. It's happened a couple of times at the Para follow-up as crossed into the following year which will definitely be a target for him because generally the seven nations involved Thailand tend to do really well in the powerlifting in that so both Thai lifters have had one no lift and one good lift so far. As for our two Japanese involved, they've both been successful. Different styles. Nishizaki has bounded onto the bench. He's got his lift out of the way in the first round anyway. Ichikawa, a bit more detailed. And see the energy sapping through. The strain involved from Ichikawa in the opening round, but Going again here at 124, which is seven on top of what he did in the opening round. His first global championship. That actually seemed to be less visual, visible effort than the previous one. And he got it. 2-1 in his favor. The body stance actually was voted down against them. You don't see a lot of that compared to the bar control and the press, which are the ones you tend to see voted down the most. Cracking. So Ishikawa moves up to fourth position. Japan currently 
second and fourth overall. Thailand fifth and sixth. That was technically brilliant. And compared to his first round attempt where he'd taken a long time on the bench, but there's a bit more noticeable strain involved. Paolo Agosti now for Italy. 127 in the opening round, this 131, his target. Gusty then is looking like a much higher finish here than he achieved in the previous World Championship. 131, adding four to the bar compared to last time. He's got it lifted. I think we're going to go with the flags for this. Flags it is. And it's all three red. So, no luck for him. And it was the press, we believe, that went wrong for him. And the chess sequence, too. Results have come through in the computer system belatedly, and they all three voted him down on those two elements of the four. Three more lifters to go in this second round. And we are going into higher numbers here. And even though Kavabilo Kavisov of Tajikistan, who we're seeing now, missed 130 in the opening round. He's going higher this time. 133, he's added three to the bar. You may remember his lift last time around drifted backwards. Quite a considerably onto the rack. But they've obviously felt him and his coach has been hovering in the background the entire time immediately took up his perch at the back while Kavisov was getting onto stage. They must feel they've got that ironed out. Tajikistan, it's flag so similar to Hungary, a little emblem in the middle, natural emblem. That is definitely a lift which was much more vertical this time, and they've all gone against him in terms of the press. So they all voted him down for that. The issues weren't as great this time as they were in round one, but they were still there. The discontentment, obvious. So two to go. Tetsuo Nishizaki. Zipping onto stage alongside his coach there, John Amos, familiar to a lot of you. Was on the organizational side of world power powerlifting for years and years. Thumping competitor in his day too. That is 
not actually very long ago. It's the Japan national coach now, has been for a couple of years. Nishizaki looked so impressive in the opening round with his 132. I just wonder if coming so close to a major championship medal less than a year ago in the Asian Para Games in Jakarta has sent his career off in a different trajectory. The closest he's ever got to a medal in his international careers. Definitely been an upward trajectory in terms of world championships. 15, 2014, 11th last time out in Mexico City. Big potential for a top 10 here. He's got his first mark on the board, 132. Panasuk is ahead of him on 150, which is a big, big ask. But this is 137. Let's get a little bit closer at least. testing himself there but he's got it perfectly three out of three for Tetsuo Nishizaki so both Japanese lifters have got their two lifts on the board and considerable gaps between the two also Ichikawa jumping by seven and Nishizaki by five So superb lifting by him so far. There's only incidentally ahead of Nishizaki two other lifters from Asia. So he's going to be the third best from his continent. And you know what? Could end up being the best. Depends on what the others do in Group A. Here's our leader then from Ukraine, Konstantin Panisyuk, 150, got in the opening round, this for 156. Eighth in Mexico City in the World Championships there. At worst, it's already ninth for him here. And the more misses there are in Group A, Higher up, he'll finish. 156, he's gunning for then Panishuk. From Odessa, coached by Yegor Pirogov. Again, he hasn't hung around, and again, it's a good lift. 156. 2 1 in his favour, just one of the side referees going against him in terms of the press, but everything else spot on. He's having a great competition. You can't glance away with him because if you do, bar's already in the air. It's absolutely flying through his competition so far. You have to be impressed with what he's produced. There's still eight to go in Group A, but he's pitched himself really well so far. 150, then 156. He's flying. So Dylan Sparks again for Canada, who is to date one of two lifters to have had two misses so far. So let's see if this can change for him. Based in Edmonton, a proper sporting city in its own right. It's had a World Athletics Championships. Big chances in the Para Pan Ams next month in Lima. Able bodied Pan Ams kick off this week, next few days. Big prospects for him in Peru. Can he improve his prospects here? It's his final 
left, two misses at 90. This time it looked smoother. Is he going to get the nod of approval? He's not going to. And again, it's the press that all three referees have marked him down on. But that did look better. On to Lima then and the Pan Ams. This will have been a good primer on the way. In the Pan Ams, he'll have a strong chance of a medal. Lots will have been learned here. Southeast Asia's got its own big games coming up in the next six months. There's a man who's got podium ambitions potentially. The next two men we're going to see. First of all, Surasat Chantak cleared 85. Missed 90, going for 90 again. Chantak was 15 kilos behind McIntorn in Egger in that World Cup back in April. Our next World Championship venue in two years' time. Cleared 70 there. He's already gone to 85 here. And this for 90. Real struggle on the way up. And he has not got that, and they've all voted him down on that on the press. So he has been denied, and he finishes on 85. So no joy for Chantak with his last two lifts, but Tanakrit McIntorn, who cleared 85 in winning that bronze in the Egger World Cup. He's cleared 87 here and going for 95 now. He's in fifth place and he'll stay fifth. I think really for Chantak and McIntorn, it has been a fruitful day. So 95 for McIntorn. I don't need to add anything to that. Uh, no lift. And you can hear that howl of anguish. That was a couple of kilos too many probably. He added eight onto the bar. He thought it was worth a go. No doubt about that. He's had a good day, he's lifted 87, he finishes in fifth at the moment in this group, and Chantak sixth. Went for 95, you can't beat a bit of ambition. Third, 
That's the latest situation. Ichikawa coming out now, going for a one, two, seven. So two clearances so far, 117, 124, he's had a buoyant day. weights to date. Ten more than what he lifted in the opening round. And again, he's taking his time on the bench. 20 seconds to go. He's not going to be given it. It was the chess sequence they've all voted him down on, and, and two of the three also weren't happy with the press. But he did everything he wanted to there, actually. Run the clock down to the last second if necessary until he was completely comfortable. Ended up being denied. It wasn't a good lift. It was... Uh, a solid effort though, not a million miles off, finishes at 124. Yeah, it didn't really touch the chest, really no stop as well, it's Apollo Augusti. Going again, 133, missed out 131 last time, having lifted 127 in the opening round. Alaska's had a week of it already. Senior competition to come. Junior gold for Italy already. Junior world record holder. So Augusti then going at 133. The energy is put into that and the press just a little bit jagging on the way up. A little bit faltering. He got it raised. Strainful, but no lift. So 127 is where he ends on. Third spot. He would have been third anyway because Nishizaki's on 137. There is one man who can knock him down who's about to lift, and that presumably is why Augusti went for 133. Let's see if he got it, then he'd have been third anyway in the head to head. Three lifters to go. Kavisov going for 133 as well, but slightly. Heavier in body weight, which means on that head-to-head, -head, Augusti would have got it with the 133, but it's all academic now. Kavisov 
Gabibulo Kavisov, four to Jikistan, missed 130 and 133, and going for 133 again. No successful lift so far in this third and final round. And this would put him into third position. To avoid becoming the second lifter to be wiped out in the competition. Well, that looks to be his best yet. And unfortunately, again, they've all gone against him in terms of the press, so that's the end of that. He is wiped out. Doesn't register a mark, Kavisov of Tajikistan. So Gusty stays in third position. He's actually got a good acclaim as he walks off the stage. Wasn't really all that level on the way up. You can see why it's been marked down by all of them independently. So Kavis off and Sparks don't have a mark. Two more lifts to go then in Group B. And currently lying in second position, and that's where he's going to stay. As he's only adding three kilos to the boards. Would have needed an extra 13. What am I talking about? An extra 19 in order to get any higher. So... Forget about that.
so we have eight to go in Group A, and first to go is Axel Bourlon of France, who was originally looking at 157, and that would have given him the outright lead, but instead, going for 150, which would put him into a second place behind Panasiuk of Ukraine. So going for 150, Axel Bourlon, European silver medalist in Berksemer last year. And at 150, no delay, good lift it is, and Bourlon goes into second place. Silver medal in the French Championship this year behind Patrick Ardon. No real trouble, more to come. Solid, confident lifts. Lots to take away from that. Next to go then, Yuri Egochenkov of Russia, 155 the targets. No mark in his only previous major championships, the Europeans in 2015 in Egger. So looking for a mark here. 155 would put him into the silver medal position behind Panasiuk by a kilo and ahead of Borlon, who's currently third. And again, very little hesitation, and that will be a good lift to all three in his favour, actually. Centre referee had, had thoughts against, and then and second thoughts happy. So all three in his favour, but two out of the three would have given it to him anyhow. So he's fine. So the successful lifters from earlier finally being surpassed. Coming on now then for Egypt, Taha Abdel Majid. World and Paralympic bronze medalist. London 2012 bronze. And the 2010 World Championships picked up a bronze there as well in Kuala Lumpur. Most recent Wales, Mexico City, finished fifth there, was fourth in Dubai in 2014. Won the FASA World Cup this year for the second time and won the Egar World Cup in Hungary in 2017. Bronze in the African Games in Brazzaville, where the IPC organized a, a para para lifting competition as part of the overall African Games. There is a, a separate African Para Games kicking off in January. So 160 to go into the gold medal position. Here comes Abdel Majid. Solid push through, perfect. All the way through. He is our new leader for Egypt. Taha Abdel Majid. Nothing to fault there, spot on. Top of the pile already with his first attempt and we've got five to go and all three lifts have been absolutely well weighted so far in Group A. Thank 
So now we go on to our fourth lifter of the eight from Greece, Demetrius Bakakristos, European champion in Egg Air in 2015. Silver in Alexin in Russia two years earlier. Paralympic bronze, world championship bronze last time out in Rio and Mexico City. He's got big form. He's going for the fifth highest lift in this opening round. Sixty three for Baka Christos. In terms of the weights between the eight in this group, they're all pretty much contenders here. And one six three for Baka Christos. He's absolutely nailed. It's a good lift. 163 for the Greek. He goes into the lead. We've got four to go in this opening group. And he is well in control. He's got a great chance of another major championship medal here. Originally he was looking for 170, which would have been the second heaviest weight. He knows it's definitely potentially there for him for 163 to kick off. And Baka Christos is our new leader. So now we have got for China, Wang Jian, the former world and Paralympic champion, the current Asia Oceania champion from Kitakyushu last year. It was a silver for him in 2015 in the previous Asian championships, which were held actually here in Kazakhstan in Almaty. Silver in Rio, having been Paralympic champion in Athens in 2004. Fourth in the World Championships two years ago in Mexico City. And he's going fourth highest here in the opening round with 173. Wang at 173. And that has gone against him by two to one. Both side referees not happy with the press. So it obviously looked fine from the center view, but not if you were watching from the angle. So at the moment, he doesn't become number one. Interesting thing is, as one of the side referees had originally given that as a clearance and then just had a quick second thought about it. So no joy. So that is the first miss of the opening round of Group A. Next up, a man with loads of titles currently to his name. The reigning Asian, Southeast Asia, Asian full stop, an Asian Games champion. Gwen Binan, Binan Gwen of Vietnam, silver medalist of the last world championships in Mexico City. No mark in the Paralympic Games in Rio. Seven five from Gwen. Third highest target in this opening round. We're well into the medal contenders now. 
way things are currently situated, any of the eight in this group can walk away with a big prize today. Let's see what he can pull off here. 175. Two one against, and I hope that's not anything more serious with the right hand than first glance. Centre referee didn't like the press, and one of our side referees went against them on the chess sequence. Different things picked up. Gwen misses out then, 175. Two and against, so not very far away. It went wrong from there. For Nigeria, the reigning African, African Games, Commonwealth Games, World and Paralympic Champion, Roland Ezurike. Silver in the Commonwealth Games in 2014 in Glasgow. Everything else since then, gold. Rio, Mexico City, Gold Coast. Algiers, Lagos, Brazzaville. Gold in Lagos in the international competition there back in January. Gold in the FASA World Cup in Dubai last year. used to being number one. Azurike, 177. This to take a lead of 14 kilos, and you know what? He's absolutely got and done it. Two to one in his favor. Azurike's our leader by a long way. Those misses from Wang and Gwen have given Azurike a big advantage over Baku Christos. That was a belting lift. He was originally looking at 100 and 65, lifted 177 instead. Fabulous lift into the lead. Glided through. So Fezerike has got form, winning form and lots of it. Vladimir Krivulia doesn't. It's his first major championship since the 2014 Worlds in Dubai when he won a silver his last Paralympics, London 2012 with a bronze. Russia off the scene for four years. Lad back into international competition earlier this year. They've already had gold in the 49. That very impressive Victory from Vladimir Balinmetz with a European record, and that is what Cravillo is looking for straight away with his first attempt. 181, the European record, which is his. Can he break it immediately? He has! Oh, ho, he has! 183! Magnificent! Cravillo won the Ego World Cup earlier this year, and he set that European record, which has just been broken. It was 181 going into the year, then 182 in Eger, and now 183 here. He's put himself into the lead, six clear of Ezurike. The gold medal charges on. Back of Christos down into the bronze medal mark. Right now, the four men in big contention for bronze and four for gold. Wang and Gwen unsuccessful so far which has led back a Christos in for the bronze medal, but he's going to have to go much higher to hold on to it, unless Wang and Gwen have serious problems in the next two rounds. Back a Christos third on 163. Abdel Majid fourth on 160. Ekachenkov currently sixth on 155 because Panasiuk from Ukraine in Group B came up with 156. Massive, massive.
battle across the board. And still Bourlon, you could say, in seventh has got a, a metal shot, but he'll have to hit 164 in order to do it. This is 156 with his penultimate attempt. He's in seventh. This to go fifth above Panasiuk and Igochenkov. 156 for Bourlon. quite well 156 I think we're gonna go to the flags here yep we're going to the flags let's see if they were happy with that 2-1 against center referee and the left side referee not satisfied so he stays on 150. We've got some uh, really interesting lifts coming up in this second round. Potential for more records. Sheriff Osman's world record is probably safe. Obviously, he's got the African record as well. Ekachenkov of Russia going for 161, currently in sixth position. This would put him fourth, two kilos off the bronze. Egachenkov is really impressed so far and has done again here. 161 for Egachenkov. Nothing more to add, very impressive, and once more wasted very little time in producing it. Goes his way through behind the scenes. Definitely get the impression the referees are, are watching the lifters of short stature just a lot more closely in terms of the press these days. Not saying there weren't previously, but even more investigatory now. As Taha Abdel Majid of Egypt comes through, 164, having lifted 160 in the opening round. He gets this, he goes into the bronze medal position by one kilo. Head of Baco Christos is up next after him. Abdel Majid with the African Championship silver medal in Algiers last year, bronze in the African Games in Brazzaville and gold in the FASA World Cup back in February. Gold in the Eger World Cup in Hungary two years ago. Egypt did very well there. Paralympic bronze in 2012, didn't compete in Rio. Fifth in the last World Championships, fourth in Dubai prior to that, and bronze in Kuala Lumpur in 2010, going back in time. It goes into this pitched as the sixth heaviest in the opening round. It was fourth best at the end of round one, fifth now, this to go third. It's pushed through well, he's got it raised, and it's 2-1 in his favor. It's a good lift for Taha Abdel Majid. 164. Excellent. There's a lot to like about that. Abdel Majid. Improvement of four kilos in his previous round, and he 
produced an excellent effort there. 164 puts him into the bronze medal position ahead of Dimitrios Bakakristos of Greece who comes up now. 163 in round 165 here. To go back again into bronze. Finished sixth in the European Championships in Berks Mare last year, but bronzes in his last World Championships, his last Paralympic Games, and a previous European champion. 165 for Baka Christos. And it's two to one in his favour. Good news, only the centre judge voting him down, so he goes back into the bronze medal position. He's a big candidate again for a medal once more here. For China, Wang Zhan, 173 missed in the previous round. The reigning Asia Oceania World and Paralympic champion, based in his bath city of Ubai. Jan, a 173. And that's again all going against him. All three have voted him down. Two for the press, one for the bar, centre referee. Uh, Luis Lete against him in terms of the bar control. So Wang has had two attempts and missed both. The uh, resume line, I should say, would have been appropriate for uh, Beijing in 2008. That's when he was reigning world and Paralympic champion. It's format for him now, because the man who holds that mantle we'll see in two lifts time. But Wang in a bit of trouble about being wiped out. It's opening the door for Baka Christos for a bronze medal shot. Same for Abdel Majid, same potentially maybe for Edgar Chekhanov, but it depends on what Wang does in the final round and what Gwen Binan does here. Missed 175, not by much actually in round one, going for 177 here, adding two to the bar. Gwen dominating in Asia. He's got another title to go for in January for the ASEAN, the Southeast Asian Para Games. But uh, world silver in Mexico City behind Azuruke. But gets this, goes into the bronze medal position. Same as what Azuruke successfully got in round one, but on the head to head, the Lifter from Nigeria would still be ahead on body weight. So, 
to get into the medals for the first time today. Gwen. He's got it raised. And it's so similar to round one. It's two and against. And it's the chest that he's been voted down on by two of the three. From the other angle, he was fine. To the right side referee, that was perfect. To the center referee, it's the chest. And to the left side referee. Not enough contact, perhaps, we can get from that head-on view. So, he too, Gwen, is in danger of being wiped out. But on both occasions, he's been really, really close. Currently in the silver medal position, Roland Ezerike, the reigning African, African Games, Commonwealth Games, World and Paralympic champion for Nigeria. 177 cleared in the opening round. This for 185 to take the lead by two on Crivulia. And in terms of the head to head, if he finishes level with Gwen or Crivulia, or in fact Wang, it'll always go as Urique's way as he is the lightest of body weight of those four of the gold medal candidates. One eight five for Ezurike. And he's punched through well, but no the press has been voted down by two of the three. So no success. Interesting. Maybe not considered to be leveling the way up. It was the press on that occasion he was voted down by. Chess sequence they all felt was fine. Not a major stop on the way up. So no joy that time. He came immensely close. And there's not much doubt about that. As still our leader, Vladimir Krivulia, comes on. He's broken his own European record already today. Twice this year. And this for the hat trick. For 189 to copper fast in his position and gold for now. Go for another European record. Well supported as usual from the contingent from Russia. Gravoli at 189. At the moment, judging of what's being aimed for by the rest in round three, if he gets this, the gold probably will be his. And the gold probably will be his. Two out of three, another European record for Vladimir Kravulia of Russia. And an absolute belter. It's definitely put it up to the rest of them. And could it be that in their first competition back, the first two men's events of these World Para Powerlifting Championships are both won by Russia? Excellent. That is the third time he's broken his European record this week. Onward and upward for Vladimir Krivulia. Absolutely fantastic. Into the final round. Ball on. Missed at 156 in round two. Going again here. In his third and final attempt. And Ball on is the only lifter out of the eight in this final round who is not having a medal attempt.
everything else after this is for at least bronze. Ball on is seventh. This to match the lift of Panisir can overtake him in the head-to-head. -head. One, five, six. Has he done it? He hasn't. All three against him. It's the chess sequence. Again, that's been voted down on by two and the press by the other referee of the three. So he finishes on 150 and he ends in seventh place. And in terms of Panasia, who missed 161 in the B group, if he got that, actually, he probably would be fifth now. But anyhow, Bullon aiming to go for six, didn't get it. It was right at the end that it wasn't fully executed according to the referees. So now it heats up all the way here. The final seven lifts, all medal attempts. Yuri Igorchenkov of Russia first, lying in fifth place. This an attempt at bronze. Sixty-six for Igor Chenkov. Then back at Christos, currently in the bronze medal spot. One six five. He's not got that. Two and against. So he misses out on a medal. He had a good opportunity of it. One six one is where he finishes with, and that is currently fifth. But obviously, we've got two lifters to come. Who at the moment of no mark to the name. Demetrius back at Christos then for Greece. Going for 168. He's cleared 163 and 165 already. He's in third position. And this basically to make that bronze a little bit more secure, but there are three men who could whip it away. And he is gunning for 170. And uh, actually, Baka Christos was due to be next on the list, but it's not going to be him. It's going to be Abdel Majid. Baka Christos has gone for 170, which means he's now not next to go. It'll be Abdel Majid instead, who may not have necessarily been expecting that. But them's the rules. Baka Christos decided to go for something uh, even stronger. Now, Abdel Majid going for 170 here. As a result, Baka Christos is going to have to go for the same mark. That's why you were hearing the Greek music a few moments ago. Maybe even Baka Christos was expecting it to be him. But because of the change of weights, we have to go in ascending order. So it is Abdel Majid now. Currently lying in fourth spot. This again to go above Baka Christos, who has the right to reply next. Ikachenkov had his attempt at bronze, unsuccessful. Abdel Majid currently in fourth spot. This, the opportunity to push into third place. Seventy. 
who's been a world bronze medalist previously. This the lift to do it again, but it's got against him two to one. And it was the press as seen from both sides, both side referees that he's been voted down on. Center referee got a clean bill of health from, but wasn't enough. So Abdel Majid, he finishes on 164 and at best it's fourth. But he may not finish there. There's still two to lift to having a mark yet. So Baco Christos is next. Absolutely wrapped up in what's happening around. It's his turn to come out now. And he came really close to it, but the press from my side didn't look right. Back of Christos coming on now for 170. Baka Christos, 170, he's in the bronze medal position, this to make it a little bit more secure. But whether he gets the bronze or not, it's not really in his hands. It's 170 that's in his hands, and they've all gone against on the press that time, so he will not be given that. 165, his best then. Whether or not it's gonna be a good night, it's not up to him. Baka Christos is on the brink of another major championship medal, being the former European champion, twice a European medalist. Paralympic bronze, world bronze, and at the moment, another world bronze coming. Wang Xian is one of the two who can deny Baka Christos another global medal. Going for 173 here, the Paralympic champion from Athens in 2004, and the World Championships in 06 in Busan. Hundred and seventy-three is target, which he's been stuck on all the way. You have to say he's been quite close to it on both occasions, particularly with his first round lift, which was two and against. So what? 173. Again, he's got it raised. This time was it clean. Again, it's not. All three against on both the chest and the press. So Wang is wiped out. He doesn't register a mark. Baka Christos is going to finish fourth at least. And a big chance for bronze. But that's now twice that all three referees have said no. Maybe not enough of a stop. And the press, they didn't like either. Three to go. Two already in medal positions. Gwen Binan of Vietnam. Close on 175. Close on 177. Really close. Two and against. It's going for 178 here. He 
He's going for silver. One seven seven is original target. Would have been for bronze. Level with Desert Rike, but the Nigerian lifter would beat Gwen and the head to head. So if you're going to go for one seven seven, may as well go for one seven eight. Leap up, try and get the silver for here. Currently not on the board. Asian champion, Asian Games champion, world silver medalist. The last games in Mexico City. This for silver again, right at the end. He's looked quite smooth all the way through. Has he been given this? He hasn't, and it's 2-1 against again. And it's the very same sequence. One from the side referee in the right, the other two saying no. That was marked down on the press by both. He misses out again. That is so unfortunate. He's been really close each occasion. Baka Christos has the bronze. They've all seemed satisfied with the chest. There was the press, the view from the back and from the left. So what that means is that Roland Ezrique has silver at least, and this lift is for gold. To match Crivoglia's 189 from the second round. And Ezrique would take it on the head-to-head. -head. No successful attempt yet in this final round as was the case actually in Group B. They've all extended themselves very much. world and Paralympic champion to get gold again and at 189 he's got it raised and they've all voted him down for the chess sequence he's missed out it's silver for Ezurike Crivoglia's won gold for Russia There's a bit of unhappiness there. So the world champion receives the silver instead. I think that's an appeal coming in. It was the chess sequence in which he was marked down by all three. So they'll have a look from all angles. At the moment, Ezurike 177. It was the chess sequence. We remind you. Crivoglia winning with his 189 and actually would have won with the 183. We'll keep you posted on that. Crivoglia with the gold medal. Russia have taken the first two men's golds. Going for another European record, his third of the day. His very first lift was a European record. Crivoglia's won it, he's got the gold. Remember Nigeria appealing the 189 which would put Ezurike first if they're successful. But if Crivoglia gets this, it is academic.
195. Another European record attempt and a massive one. Crivulia. He's got it up there. I think we're going to go to the flags to see if he's got it or not. Let's see. Red from all three, he doesn't get it. So, 189, two European records today from Crivulia, who's our new world champion. Previously a world silver medalist in his last Worlds in 2014. Marvellous, marvellous, and that for him. Three European records this year. He won the Ego World Cup, and now he is world champion for the very first time. Crivulia, superb. We started the day with the European record of 182. He's broken it with attempts of 183, 189. Vladimir Crivulia is the world champion for Russia. And the medal ceremonies are on the way. Crivulia then winning it with that attempt of 189 in the second round. No successful attempts in round three. Silver to Ezerike of Nigeria with his first attempt of 177. And Bako Christos again picks up his third global bronze. He's done it in Rio, in Mexico City, and now again in Nur Sultan.
So now the men's 54 kg victory ceremony. Terrific competition, records again, which is just what you want. It's been very, very engrossing stuff. That's a late appeal by a Nigeria who's not upheld. So the medals are in the order, as was originally determined. Great result for this man. It's Dwayne Kale, the IPC Vice President, and the World Para Powerlifting SDC Chairperson, uh, Kama Rosamund Kudair, who are involved in the medal presentations here. It's an absolutely tremendous bronze medal again for the third time in a global championship for Demetrius Baco Christos. European champion from 2015, finished down the field in sixth last year in Bergsamer, but bronze in Rio at the Paralympic Games. Bronze in the World Championships in Mexico City the following year. And now here he is again next time around. And Nur Sultan, he's got bronze once more. Back at Christos. It's another fabulous result for him. Two years ago, it was gold in the World Championships in Mexico City for Ronald Elizarique of Nigeria. But it's silver this time around. Five reigning titles he had going into this, and now it's four. He's still the Paralympic champion, African, African Games, Commonwealth Games champion, but world champion no more. Silver for Ezurike of Nigeria. But with Russia now back in the fold, they've taken the first two men's crowns and two European records today. A fabulous success for Vladimir Krivulia of Russia, 182. A new European record he set in Hungary back in April. Broke that with his very first lift here of 183. And he repeated at 189 in round two. Didn't get it for the third time in the last round, but it doesn't matter. It's another European Success in terms of records for Krivulia, and for the very first time, he's world champion. His first two lifts were all that he needed. His first lift, in fact, would have been enough. 183 and 189, his own European record broken, and the champion for Russia. Vladimir Krivulia.
It's the long version of the Russian national anthem. I won't worry about that, though. I remember doing a World Cup playoff, Uruguay against Costa Rica. For the 32nd and last team to play in the World Cup a couple of tournaments ago, the Uruguay national anthem for that lasted five and a half minutes. There's a wonderful sequence you can find on YouTube where Luis Suarez gives up after about two minutes. Anyway, what a result for Russia. Vladimir Krivolia, two European records. He's the world champion. Silver to Nigeria, Roland Ezerike, and bronze for Greece and Demetrius Baka Christos. That was great. We are back in a round. An hour and 10 minutes for the men's 59 kg. More action to come from Nur Sultan.